Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lori. If you are new here, I am a family nurse practitioner and today is episode three in my lab interpretation series that I am doing. I already spoke about your complete blood count and also your metabolic panel, which is your BMP and your CMP. If you haven't seen those videos, I will link them down below. I also put them in a playlist so it's easier for you to just watch the lab series. Now today we are going to talk urinary analysis and specifically about UTI because that is one of the major things that I deal with being a nurse practitioner in the geriatric population mainly in a nursing home setting. I think in one of my other lab series videos I said one of the two things that I deal with all the time infection wise is UTI and also community acquired pneumonia. UTI has a Symptoms that are by the book, burning when you pee, frequent urination. Some of them also tend to get that lower abdominal pain. If it's more serious, meaning it's moving to your back is something that we term pyelonephritis. But we're just gonna talk basic UTI just for a little bit of information for you guys. Now, I have a lot of patients that are demented and patients who have dementia, a lot of times, what can they not do? They cannot tell me that it hurts hurts them when they pee. A lot of the times I have to kind of listen to the nurses that are with the patient all the time and also the nursing assistants because they'll say she's peeing really frequently or they're not on anything like a diuretic that would cause me to say okay that's the reason why they're peeing frequently. So I have to I take that into consideration as well as falling. A lot of times when your elderly patients are falling all the time you want to check their urinalysis because sometimes they have a UTI and that is a sign of infection. Now let's get into the urinalysis itself. So when you order your urinalysis on your patient, this is typically what you will see. This is what it will look like. You will get the color, the clarity, you will get glucose so it'll tell you if there's glucose present if there's bilirubin present or ketones present when you see ketones or glucose you might want to think of diabetes ketones likely if your patient is diabetic and they're going into diabetic ketone acidosis or any acute illness if they're throwing up or they have nausea nausea and vomiting i was tending to see this when i was an icu nurse the specific gravity on your urinalysis will tell tell you if how hydrated or not hydrated your patient is. So the more concentrated your patient is dehydrated, of course. Then they'll tell you if there's any blood in the urine. There really shouldn't be any blood in your urine. If the pH is more on the alkaline side between like 7.0 to 7.5, that's likely possibly a UTI. The more acidic it is, it could be a sign of a kidney stone. Protein, it'll tell you that. These are the things that I look at when I'm thinking UTI. I look at nitrate, leukocyte, bacteria, WBC. Those are the things that I tend to look at. If there's leukocyte estrates, that's positive. That is is going to support a diagnosis of a UTI. However, it can also mean a STD. I am going to talk a little bit about some scenario at the end of the video. Now, when you get down here to your culture, the culture will normally give you a bacteria. And once you see greater than 100,000, that is definitely a positive UTI. If this number is less than 100,000, it's not a UTI. So when would I normally order a urinalysis? Like I said, if the patient complain about the regular symptoms of a UTI, if they're falling a lot sometimes, blood in the urine, check urinalysis on them because blood really should not be in your urine. Also, the color. When you look at the patient's urine and the color is not nice and clear and it's just very cloudy with a lot of sediments or something in it, you do want to also check their urine. Smell is subjective. Um, I can come in and smell someone's urine and then somebody else say, oh, I don't smell anything. So when I check the urinalysis in a nursing home setting, I always want them to send it out. If it's over the weekend, I will let them do what's called a dipstick. And a dipstick tells you quickly, potentially, if the patient have a UTI. Dipstick is not a culture. I like to get a culture on my patient. And a lot of times in a nursing home setting, the lab people 
takes a while for them to come and pick up the urine i'll tell them to go ahead and give me a, you know do the dipstick in house once they do the dipstick in house and it says that uh, there's nitrates there or leukocyte estrates there so let me clarify something for you guys nitrates is different from nitrites nitrates is normally in your urine so nitrites signif is significant for a urinary tract infection if you have nitrites that is positive the patient nine times out of ten has a urinary tract infection so for me in my practice whenever i think that a patient has a urinary tract infection i normally will order a ua cns so a urine urine analysis plus the culture and the sensitivity the culture and the sensitivity is going to tell me what bacteria is causing the urinary tract infection as well as what antibiotic is necessary to treat that bug because we don't want a patient to have a urinary tract infection and we are using the wrong antibiotic to treat the patient so when you get your culture back the, the urine culture normally at the bottom will tell you you know what this antibiotic is resistant or this one is not resistant to this bug let's talk a little bit about treatment the gold standard of treating a urinary tract infection is your bactrim and phosphomycin now if the patient has uncomplicated urinary tract infection you normally use a course of three to five days if it's complicated you want to treat them for a longer period a seven to ten day course in my practice these elderly patient it's like it's a recurring thing so I always treat them for a longer period I treat them for at least seven days also if you choose the wrong antibiotic it's not, it's not killing that bug it can have also detrimental problems for your patient so that's why I always say send your culture and wait for your culture to come back in the event that it's the weekend and the culture takes we know that the culture is going to take five days to grow in a lab and your patient is having a lot of symptoms I sometimes will treat empirically until I get the culture back but I don't do this all the time if the if the patient is not really having a lot of symptoms or we're kind of just suspecting and I get a urinalysis that says oh it might be a urinary tract infection but uh, we're not sure I'll just wait for the culture and once I get the culture back antibiotics is fine I'll leave them on it if the antibiotic is not okay of course we stop that antibiotic and put them on the proper antibiotic that they're supposed to be on now I'm gonna put a few scenarios on the screen and kind of go over a little bit with you guys if you come across this if you get your urinalysis and there the blood is negative the nitrates is positive and the leukocyte estrate is positive this is probably likely a urinary tract infection and if it's probably likely a urinary tract infection like I said you want to send for the culture to see what bacteria is growing and what you need to treat the patient for the next one if there is negative blood negative nitrates and positive leukocytes is probably contaminated however if the patient is having symptoms of a urinary tract infection I would still send this for a culture just to be on the safe side and to make sure the next one is positive blood negative nitrates negative leukocytes this is probably uh, more than likely the patient does not have a urinary tract infection the next one would also be if all three of these were negative in your urinalysis and the patient is complaining about they having they're having symptoms i would still send this for a culture because i just want to make sure that it's not that uh one of the things that i do for my patients in a nursing home setting if they have recurrent urinary tract infection i put them on a cranberry tablet yes they do have something that's a cranberry berry tablet and this is a preventative method because they're likely always having a urinary tract infection drinking cranberry juice can be a pre preventative measure in preventing urinary tract infection it's not going to cure it if you have a urinary tract infection so i hope that this helped you a little bit understanding how to kind of look at the overall urinalysis as well as how i go about treating my patients when it comes on to a urinary tract infection thank you guys again for watching don't don't forget to like comment and subscribe and i will definitely catch you guys up on my next video bye guys